beautiful people. I hope you all are having a good day. I know I am. Today, we're going to take some time and we're going to be highlighting one of the best runners in the country this year as far as high schoolers. He goes by the name of Tavon Underwood and he is coming out of Longmont, Colorado. I believe he was the National Gatorade Track and Field Athlete of the Year. Some of you may know about him, but this is just one of those in case you missed it because what he was doing out there this season and his progression has been truly remarkable. So he had an amazing state campaign. So his high school state championships down in Colorado and those he had some he had some amazing times for how the weather was down there in Colorado. And he competed in the 100, 200, 400, and 800 meter dash. Yes, I did say that. The one, two, four, and eight. And he ended up walking away with three golds and one silver medal. Initially, I thought he walked away with four golds, which is just mind blowing. That would be amazing, especially in all open events. But he did get that three golds and one silver, which is still simply remarkable. And he started off at the state championships in the 100 meter dash, and this was the only event that he took silver in, and that's probably why he had to go out there and dominate the next three races. He took silver and he ran a time of 1067, which is a great time. It's not one of the best times in the nation, but hey, that's solid, 1067. And from there, he would really, really start to burn up the track because after that 100 meter dash, he went and he competed in the 400 meter dash and he was out there. He was out there smashing, looking like a young Michael Norman. And he ran a time of 4536. Again, that is 4536, which is the number one high school time in the nation. So he completely dominated to get his first gold medal at the Colorado State Track and Field Championships. And you know, at the state championships, there is not a lot of time in between races. Things are just going and going and flowing, especially at the final show. Shortly after that 400 meter dash, he went on and he competed in the 800. Now, I don't know if this is 100% true or not, but this is just what I read. Supposedly, this was only his second time, second time competing in the 800 meters or running an 800 meter race. And that's crazy because he went out there and he won the gold medal at the Colorado State Track and Field Championships with a time of 151.97. Now, really, really think about that because that is a good time. He didn't run a, a 154 or 153, which is still decent, you know, for high school. He didn't run a 155. He ran a competitive 151. And think about all those kids who trained all year long, all year long, you know, and they ran well as well. And this guy just basically shows up, enters himself in the race or gets thrown in the race, goes out there and through all guts wins the race. It came down to a photo finish and he won the race in only his second time. And we see a lot of guys who do that. The 4-8 double, you know, they have the 400 meter speed and they have that 800 meter endurance. They do it like a Will Sumner or somebody. They have that 400, 800 double. But most of those guys are not also competing in the 100 meter dash and being competitive, you know, getting a medal in both the 100 meters and the 800 meters, getting especially a top three medal. That is brazy. That is remarkable. And like I was saying, again, after only a few minutes, he didn't have that much time to rest at the state championships. He would go and close out the show in the 200 meters. And he ran a time of 20.93, which ranked 31st in the nation for high schoolers in the 200 meter dash. And he probably would have ran a little faster if he didn't or have already run an 800, run a 400, run a 200. The, to me, you know, a lot of people are going to say the, the hardest races to run are the 400, the 400 hurdles, and the 800. He did two of the hardest races, and then after that, still went out there and won, ran one of the best times in the nation in the 200-meter dash. 
and got that gold medal. If he if he didn't compete in those other races, he might have been a at a 20.5 or a 20.6. So that boy was just out there blazing, dominating down there in Colorado at the at the championships. After that, you know, at the, after a season concluded, he competed in some more races. You guys may have seen those. He can put it, competed at the Brooks PR Invitational as well as the New Balance Nationals. Now, these are national meets where people from all over the country, the best high school runners, go. And he won the 400 at both the New Balance Nationals and at the Brooks PR Invitational. Again, against some of the best high school competition in the country, but honestly, against some of the best, like, U18 and U20 runners in the world. You know, he, he's been he's one of the fastest youth or junior kids in the world is what we're watching right here. And uh, he has signed to do his collegiate running at Kansas State University. So shout out to him for that and shout out to them. I Me mean, personally, I was kind of surprised by that because I don't usually think of sprinters when I think of Kansas State. Um, you know, you think of the Texas A&M's, USC's, Baylor's, some of the Florida schools. But, you know, from what he's done, if he continues to improve at Kansas State, they they got a diamond down there and he can you can run fast at any university. So it will be amazing. And one of the, the craziest things about this kid is his his progression, his track and field progression and his improvements have been simply remarkable over the last few years. And it shows that sometimes you just need to be focused for a few years and you can go from basically the back of the pack to the front of the pack. And all you have to do is just focus. You don't, you know, you don't need a lot. You just need a little bit of time focus because in 2021, I'm going to read you off his times. In 2021, in the 100, he ran an 1140, a 2317, and a 53.60. That was his one, two, four, and he did that as a sophomore. If a kid comes out as a sophomore and does that, you kind of, you know, he's right in the middle. He's kind of a wobbler. You're like, he really, you're not that good. But you're not bad at all. You, those are respectable times for a sophomore, I would say. But, you know, you're not getting on the podium. You're probably not going to state. You're showing up to your, your conference track meet, and that's the end of the season. 2022, he ran indoor and outdoor track and field, and he improved, you know, by a lot. In some events, he improved significantly. He ran an 11.19 in the in the 100. In the 200, he was at a 22.30. In the 400, he improved his 400 meters by five whole seconds, getting to a 48.72. Now, in that 400, you start to say, okay, you know, as a coach, you're like, oh, this kid, he's doing good. He got some talent. He went to state in all in all three of those events. He got on the podium. You know, he was like fifth, seventh, eighth. You know, he didn't get to the top of the podium, but he was there and he did well. Those are decent times. And then again, I'm going to read off his senior year progression. He went to a 10-7, so he improved his 100 meter by about a half a second. In the 200, he went to a 20.93, which is about a second and a half in improvement. And then in the 400, he went to that 45.36, which is over a three-second improvement in the 400-meter dash. And I think, you know, in sports, you see a lot of parents, coaches, trainers, et cetera, et cetera. We all want to start off our kids very young in sports. And I think it is important to, you know, expose your kids to athletics and sports extremely young, no matter what sport it is. But sometimes we find ourselves pushing 10 year olds, 12 year olds, very small kids, and they're kind of, they're doing two a days. They're competing at such a high level or training extremely hard as a young kid. You don't necessarily need that. And I feel like this, his progression shows that you don't always need that. Sometimes, you know, around the end of your freshman year or in that sophomore year, to start to take your sport extremely serious. And in those two years, you can go from basically from the back of the pack to the front of the pack in just two seasons. And that's what Tavon did here. And it's, you know, it, it's great. It goes to show, again, one of the best kids in the nation in the sprints and, and a remarkable season altogether. I do believe that he's going to be competing at the USATF 
uh, senior nationals. So we'll have to watch and see what he's going to do in the 400 meters there when he's out there competing with the big boys. It's been a long season for him. So who knows what will happen if he'll improve, if he'll, you know, break his PR. But we'll watch and wait. And all I can say is that if he continues to improve in that 400, in that 200, the way that he has over the past, last few years, you know, you may see him at the NCAA championships in in first through eighth place. So we'll have to wait and see. But that was Tavon Underwood, one of the best track and field athletes in the nation this year. And he definitely, in my opinion, had one of the best state championship performances this year. I hope to anyone who watched this and to you, Tavon, that y'all all have a blessed day. It is your boy Limitless Mike, and I'm out. Peace.